So now let's have a look into the simple exponential smoothing method. So here what we're saying is that the forecast value of any time series should be the previous forecasted value. So by y star here, you see y star we, see, we mean that is the forecasted value at time t minus 1. So this is a forecasted value, not the previous value itself. Okay. So this is the difference from the previous methods that we have been seeing in weighted uh, average method or moving average methods. So, you know, now we include the forecasted value, previous forecasted value to forecast the future. Okay. So here we say that, okay, we will have the forecasted value of the previous period plus alpha multiplied with the previous value itself and we deduct the previous forecasted value. So we take the difference between the previous period forecasted and actual value and multiply with, with the weight, which we call alpha, which is the smoothing parameter in this case. And we add it with the previous forecasted value. And in other words, if we do some calculation, we can form the equation like this, where we say, okay, alpha is equal to y t minus one plus one minus alpha weight to the previous forecasted value. Okay. So now let's have a look how it works. So here, what we're doing, we are using the previous value itself and the previous forecasted value itself. And normally the, the lower weights to the recent values and the higher the value of alpha, the higher weights to the recent values. Normally in most cases in, in maritime or in supply chain, alpha value of 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 would work just fine. We can try to optimize the value and see how it works. So now let's have a look in Excel. So here, I will just say expo to mention exponential smoothing. And then for error, I will just write error expo. So when we are doing forecast, we're using exponential smoothing. To start off, I would just say, okay, my first starting point is this one. This is my just starting point, which is same as my real data. And from this data point, we can now try to start forecasting. By the way, and on the top here, maybe I just color a cell just to put my alpha values. So let's say I put alpha value of 0 0.4, okay? So now in this second cell here, now I'm going to put in the real equation as we can see here. So the previous one was only referring to the original value just to start off, but now we will use the equation. So here I start with equal to, and then what we do, we select alpha and we fix it using a four multiplied with y t minus one, which is our previous value. Okay. And then we add plus and then one minus again alpha and we fix the alpha value multiplied with our previous forecasted value. In this case, we can use this one as our previous forecast value, right? So enter. So we see that we get the same value for this period and that's okay because we're just starting off and then we can double click here to get the values, forecasted values for all the periods. And then we can just take up to three values. Okay. So this is how, this is how our forecast looks like. If we scroll down. But so up to this point is fine. Okay, we used the previous two values and it worked fine. But now when we are in this point, so theoretically we don't have this value available. Okay, we of course have the forecasted value of the previous period to use, but we don't have this point available in theory. So we can now change this D46 and we go for D45 and then we fix it. So what we're doing is we are fixing to the last data point we have for our past values, but we are allowing our forecasted past values to move. And then enter, and then I will just drag it here. So if I double click here, what you see is that, you see, I still use the previous one, the very last data point that was available. And then I'm, I'm using just the previous uh, forecasted values, okay, in, in my equation. Okay, and same here, you see? So that's how we can actually have the forecasted values for the ensemble period in the dynamic forecast approach for in the exponential smoothing. 
And to calculate for the MAPE, we will again do the same. So this value was just the starting value, you know, but yeah, still we can use it to calculate the MAPE. So to calculate the MAPE, what we will do is we will go again, start with the function and then absolute, and then the difference between the real one and the forecasted value. And then we divide it by the, we divide it by the real value and enter. So because the value is the same, there is no error and we double click. We get all the errors and I'm taking only the latest three values here. So these are the errors. This is how the errors look like. I'll just drag it from here and remove these ones because we don't need them. So here, this is our average. Okay, we have the average of all of them. Actually, I can now take up to this point. I, I, will, I, will, I will actually skip the first one because that was not really any focus, just, this, just to start off, okay. So, and then again for the training sample MAP, I will again, yeah, I will include this one, but not the first one. And we have the test sample here. So how does our forecast perform actually? So here we see compared to naive forecast, overall and training doesn't perform well, but the training sample performs to some extent good. Not bad, not that bad. Now we can actually try to optimize these values. So what I will go, I will try to do is I will go to data and then I'll go to solver. And I want to optimize this value here, okay? By changing cells, I'm going to change it to this value here. And then I don't really need any constraint here. And then I will just click solve. Converged and we got a solution. Okay, so it says that if we use exponential parameter of 1.11, then actually we will get the minimum solution. Yeah, actually this is better than the naive forecast. But one more thing that I forgot is actually the exponential value cannot be higher than one. And that is because when we use one minus alpha format, you know, the idea is that the values adds up to one. So this value cannot be really more than one. It has to be between zero and one. So I should actually put this in my constraints. So I will now go to add constraint. I will say this value should be less than or equal to one add and this value should be greater than or equal to zero and add. So these are the two constraints that you can see here and that this value should be less than one and greater than zero and then I will click on solve again and yeah of course we found a solution and the solution says hey we should go for one and then actually what we have is more or less the same as the naive forecast approach right because when we put one here in alpha, it is not counting anything. It is not counting the previous forecasted value. It is only counting the previous period. And that's when we it is it becomes same as the naive forecast. So, so far what we see actually that the naive forecast is doing the best. And this simple exponential smoothing form, uh, method, we can use it when we don't see any clear trend in data or any clear pattern in data. So by clear trend in, trend in data, we mean like trends like this, as you can see, it's increasing. And, or some kind of pattern in data, you know? So here you see, here we have some pattern in data. So when we don't have any seasonality effect or trend effects, that's when we can use simple exponential smoothing. So now let's move into Holt's trend method in the next video. So now we include the trend in this format of equations.